Well, hello everyone. Welcome back for part three of Embracing Indigenous Ways of Knowing and Doing here with Minecraft Education Edition. I am back to welcome all of you and go over our housekeeping rules again. My name is Emily Fitzpatrick and I am co-founder here at the Cobblestone Collective. I'm joining you today from Between the Lakes Treaty 3 um, here in Arthur, Ontario. You have an amazing team joining you. Some faces you'll recognize, some faces will be new. But before we get started, I just wanna say thank you on behalf of the Cobblestone Collective, Minecraft Education, and Microsoft Education Canada for allowing us to join your learning today and allowing us to learn alongside you. We cannot wait to close out this three-part series but we also know that this is just the start of all of our learning together. This isn't the end. Two housekeeping things to remind you of or let you know of if this is the first time you're joining us. The first one is we are here on YouTube, hanging out live with you, but we bring the power of YouTube with us. So at the bottom of this video screen, you will see a beautiful pause button and we encourage you to use this throughout this lesson. Remember, you can pause us if you need to take a break, if you get interrupted, if you've got to go and type your username and password in. You can also rewind, so you can use that toggle down at the bottom if you want to rehear something or rewatch something or even just replay it. So remember, we're here in YouTube live with you, but you can pause us, the beauty of the internet. And finally, the same form that we've been using the past couple um, parts to this Kotatlin series, this is how we are going to get connected. So right now you can hear and see me. I can't hear or see you, but we wanna hear from you. So head over to that link uh, in a new tab to open up our communication form. So go ahead right now, open yourself up a new tab and up at the top, you're going to type the cc.page slash Minecraft 06. I'll say that again. You're gonna go ahead and type the cc.page slash Minecraft 06. And that's gonna open up a form. And in that form, you're going to see two questions. The first question is, what is your first name? And the second question is, well, what's the answer to the question that you were asked? And so throughout this lesson, just like you've seen in part one and part two, you are going to have a whole bunch of different opportunities to share um, your thoughts and answers to the questions and maybe even snag a fun shout out from our team. With those two pieces covered, I am so excited to learn with you all. I'm going to disappear for a moment and then our team will be out to connect with you. Have a great part three and I can't wait to see and hear about what you've learned today. Hello, everyone. So excited for our part three, Embracing Indigenous Ways of Knowing and Doing with Minecraft. You know, before we get started, big shout out to Miss Axford and Miss Davis uh, and Mr. Koo's class, Mrs. Penfold's class, uh, Mrs. Chen and Miss and Tipson's class. Oh man, we have so many of you uh, coming back to joining us for this. So once again, uh, just a big welcome. My name is Jonathan and I am here on Treaty 19, um, as well as uh, I have some colleagues of mine and uh, uh, friends joining us. And so I'll let Jill introduce herself and then we will get to our agenda. Good day, everyone. My name is Jill Oman. I am originally from Sagging First Nation on Treaty One territory. I currently reside in Winnipeg, Manitoba, which is also on Treaty One territory. I hope you guys have a great day and have some fun with Minecraft. Awesome. So before we begin, just setting the stage, our agenda today is we're going to be learning from our elder today, Pat Patsy Day, as well as learning about walking in the world with Manitowabi Aki, and then we're going to have some closing discussions. So without further ado, I would like to introduce uh, Patsy 
to you. Um, and she has some amazing information to tell us about uh, the people of the Longhouse. Yeah, one we'll go. And, uh, <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. Kajijuan means a flower that's big. It's the name that my grandmother gave me some time ago. Ahotnawal ni wakita lod. Ahotnawal is the turtle, you can see. And that's my clan. That's the family that I'm born to. So I am from Honyata Aga near Gohanjoda. Honyata Aga is people of the Standing Stone, which in uh, English now we call Onaida. And so that is my introductions, but I do want to begin with a thanking song. Uh, we begin all of our gatherings with a thanking. And this is just a short song to uh, you know, uh, help you understand that that is what we do in our protocols for gatherings. Here go. means the greatest thanks we can offer. Yo refers to the feminine forces of Mother Earth. Ho refers to the male forces of Father Sky. Gaia is the world. Gaia wa no. So around the world, we want peace and within. And so I introduce myself. I give greetings. Saguli meaning greetings. So swakweg is everyone. And uh, we always, uh, again, begin with a thanking, and we want to say thank you for the people. This is the first uh, uh, part that we give, and we say, And so we're saying that we're going to bring our minds together, and we're going to give thanks for the people. And, of course, that means our ancestors and those who lived on the earth with us at this time and those yet to come. And of course, we give thanks and honor our grand ancestors because that is who uh, brought the world to such a good place for us to live in today. We have a, what we call the seven generation rule, meaning seven generations ago, the people thought about us and how their lives, our lives would be at that time. And that's why it's incumbent upon us. And that's our responsibility to make sure the world is in good stead for the next seven generations. And so we've done our uh, opening, a grand uh, 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 thanking, and we'd like to um, give the land acknowledgement. Now, um, I'm located in our traditional uh, homelands of the Haudenosaunee people, the Longhouse people. And we know that to be true, that we've been here for 13,000 years or more uh, from our oral histories and the archeological record. We have, uh, I've been you know, honored with uh, gifts of uh, what we call points and scrapers, which are uh, artifacts uh, like the, the um, arrowheads and the uh, scrapers. Here's an arrowhead, a sample. You probably recognize that shape and uh, approximately size. And this one is called a scraper. This is actually 13,000 years old. Because uh, when I received uh, this gift about hmm, five, ten years or more now, I did not know the age of them. And I uh, was able to speak with an archaeologist, 40-year PhD at Western University by the name of Professor Chris Ellis. And he goes every summer, um, long weekend in July, to Scanado, which is the Longwoods Conservation Area. And he will um, help to date and tell you the age of your collections if you found something from one year to the next. So I took my collection and he began to date them and put them in rows and said, you know, this row here, these are 5,000 or six or nine. This one sat alone at the top of the other rows. And he said, this one is 13,000 years old. Well, you can imagine how odd I was at, at hearing that. And just to look at the fluting on it, to know that this was made by people that long ago, to be able to scrape the rabbit skin or to scale a fish, and it would have had an attachment of some kind that would help uh, to hold on to it, etc. 
And so we know that that is uh, how long the people of the Long House have been in this region. And this is, of course, the uh, eastern fence around the Great Lakes, um, uh, the, all of southwestern Ontario, uh, having uh, Longhouse people in our uh, historia here. Um, we don't even know the name they call themselves, such as the name that I know. I belong to the uh, nation of the Haudenosaunee, uh, the people of the Standing Stone. All the people of the Five Nation Confederacy are Haudenosaunee, and that's the most the um, Oneida, I'm coming from the east now, the Mohawk, the Oneida, the Onondaga, and the uh, Cayuga and Seneca. And we call the Mohawk people keepers of the Eastern Door, because again, they are in their traditional homelands of the east, and I'm not sure if I'm pointing the correct way, but we have this flag um, that uh, was a wampum early on in our um, history historical records of, of our oral history and also uh, the written one. And so uh, this uh, happened to be formed, the Confederacy, over a thousand years ago now. And that's because we, as people living on Turtle Island, we call North America Turtle Island, uh, that's when approximately the um, first uh, visitors came to uh, Turtle Island from across the Great Waters. So that would be the skin. Navy and the Norwegians, and they came to the edges of the Turtle Islands and called the land that they found was Newfound Land. So that's the name they gave it. Of course, it was to our people. But the word came through messengers to the people that, of the Long House uh, on, on uh, Turtle Island, and this is a traditional area in present-day New York State in the Finger Lakes region, and this is how we stand and, and live on the world. And so as uh, people who were related but separate nations, we did have a lot of fighting and warring going on at that time, just like a family will have arguments and, and not agree about things. But when those strangers came back in a you know, thousand years ago now, about the time the Magna Carta was formed, we're told, the people of these nations realized that there were others of, in the world that would be coming that were much stronger, had a technology that we did not know of. And of course, because of the ships, the way they uh, were so much bigger and made, that was the real um, wake up call for our nations to stop fighting and start to get along as, as family. And so we came together as a confederacy and united to be stronger. We set up the rules of the great law and there are over 140 different um, rules or uh, tenets to follow in that great law. And so when you see these, this particular um, symbol, e either as a flag being flown um, in the news or on paper, wherever, you know that this represents Haudenosaunee people as one voice, one nation, one confederacy. And it has been the uh, longest living uh, democracy in the world. They even call this the anvil of America, is what John F. Kennedy had said in one of the books that I read a time ago. And so this is the first wampum between our own people that laid down the rules that we would be in uh, from here uh, until when, forever as, as, uh, as nation. As a confederacy. And so the white and the purple have a lot of meaning. And these wampums were made of seashells. So the seashells that they have made from are called the Quahog and the Welk shell at the eastern seaboard. Excuse me. And so it's a really amazing to me that uh, and our ancestors could actually make little beads from these kind of shells and without the modern tool. And so the white wampum shells, beads here. Now the white, of course, you know, colors have a lot of meaning. And white is a path of peace. And so we see that path of peace going across around each of the territories with the Mohawk, the Oneida, the Onondaga, the central fire. This is representing the tree of peace, which is 
pine, the white pine. And because of the eastern woodlands here, we have that uh, white pine to build our long houses. And then, of course, we have the uh, continue on with the Seneca and Cayuga. Uh, Seneca are the keepers of the western door, and the Mohawks are the keepers of the eastern door. That's because any other people, uh, you know, that are coming across our territories will be met uh, at the edge of the woods. We still have a ceremony called Edge of the Woods, where uh, we would have uh, greeted the people that are coming and asked what their needs are, help them to navigate through our territory if they're just passing through to go somewhere else, and uh, those keepers of the Eastern Door, the Mohawk, would have sent runners. We still have runners today. We still use the messengers. Those messengers would be traveling, you know, without eating, sleeping, drinking until they get to the place where they need to deliver their message. Does uh, someone want to um, relate to me the name of the uh, Five Nations? Okay, boys. Okay, students. So what do we have? We have a question that comes up from Patsy. Who are the five nations or can someone name? So let's go into that. Let's go into that. Uh, the CC dot page slash Minecraft. The name the five nations. I know Mr. Marshall's class. You've been in there and you've been doing some great work so far. Um, Sophia, Rowan, Amy, Celia, I think you have it so far. I know Joey, you have a question. I will come back to that question when we when we talk about the wampum belts a little bit more. Uh, we're still waiting. <laughs> oh, there we go. Zachariah, yes, Mohawk, Od um, Onadaga, Oneida, Kawaga, and Seneca from Zachariah. Damien. Thipika, got it. Mr. Ray's class, Dylan. Are they correct, Patsy? Is that is that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're correct. I'll give you the answer. As we said, of the Eastern Door, being the Mohawk, and then we're the little brothers next to them, the Oneida, and then the central, what we call the central fire or the capital region, is our Onondaga, represented by the Tree of Peace, like pine. And then we have the Cayuga after that and the Seneca. So there's a, a, a very simple little uh, memory tool you can remind yourself, and it's called SCOOM. So it's S-C-O-O-M, and that would be from the uh, western door over. The Seneca are the keepers of the western door. Who are the keepers of the eastern door? Okay, folks, so who are the keepers or who is the keeper of the Eastern door? And I do remember Patsy saying this quite a lot. She even said it in, as she was talking about the five nations. So I'm wondering if Miss Kern's class, if you have an answer for that, who are the, Sasha, yes, so far Sasha has it right. Unless I have it wrong, but I believe Sasha has it right. Jill, do you have any anyone that you? Uh, I think Sierra on there has it right as well. I'm uh, just taking a look. Miss Shannon's oh, class, Ms. yes. Miss Shannon's class okay. has it. Ganit. Okay, Patsy, what is the answer? Of course, it's the Mohawk. Mohawks, they're the keepers of the eastern door. They're the farthest east and therefore would be first in our confederacy to meet the uh, newcomers uh, that were um, coming through our, our territories. And so the Mohawks uh, are the eastern edge. And then, of course, the Seneca I mentioned being at the western. And so they're the keepers of the western door. And where, even though you see the uh, homes, uh, you know, represented by larger um, rectangles, we're what called the little brothers because we're closer to the central or the capital region of the Onondaga. So uh, the Cayuga and Oneida are the uh, little brothers. And so that is the um, federacy um, that was built uh, by, uh, you know, uh, obviously a lot of uh, discussion and talk about 
about things uh, after the uh, newcomers came to the land, uh, the peacemaker and Hiawatha went from uh, one community to another, took a number of years to uh, finally um, come to the realization that we all needed to have peace. And so they uplifted a, a great white pine. They uh, dug up a huge hole there and threw all of their warring uh, implements in that hole. And you may have heard that story before. And that's what they did uh, and then formed this league. And so they uh, say that the um, under the tree of peace was uh, the river and it would go into uh, the waters and be washed away. So there'd be no more warring and the tools were gone. And so this is a representative of all of our nations together as we have, uh, you know, interactions, relationships with other nations. Now, of course, it uh, makes us wonder what was the sixth nation because we are more familiar probably with the six nations and they call it the Iroquois Confederate. The name Iroquois is not really our own. That is a name that was given to us by the French. The French were usually uh, um, rather one of the uh, earlier uh, nations to visit here with Champlain in the 1600s, although, um, and about 100 years prior to that, the Spaniards had been on the uh, uh, Grand Banks and fishing and, and hunting out there in the summer and, and then would go home. Uh, Champlain in the 1600s, 30s or so, actually came and uh, traveled further in. And uh, we know about the Jesuits coming into the territories of the Haudenosaunee here. As I say, uh, it, it, there uh, have been uh, nations of of longhouse people, uh, so ancient, we don't know their names. If you look on uh, maps that might try to describe them, uh, they would be named people such as the Erie, the Neutral, the uh, Petun, or the Tobacco people, uh, and as well as the Huron, uh, the Wyandotte. And so uh, the, this, is, this is the Confederacy that uh, is uh, traditionally uh, in the Great Lakes regions and uh, the Finger Lakes. Now, um, as, uh, as a confederacy, as I say, it's often called the Iroquois. Now you can imagine that the name Iroquois was given by the French and uh, you know, you just have to remind yourself that Quebecois and you know the Iroquois was uh, the French term. That uh, word actually was, uh, it was meant to be um, a, a bit of an insult, although I take it as a, as a good warrior sign because uh, that meant snakes, adders, because our uh, warriors would come up from the grass or jump down from the trees. I mean, they hid themselves well and, and fended off uh, many, um, you know, people who were, were trying to uh, come here to uh, get rid of us, to get, you know, the lands and the resources and so on. And so the name was usually spat out at us. They we were here. However, uh, that's not the name we give ourselves. But uh, we do know that uh, in recent times we've gone from the five nations to the six nations of the Iroquois Confederacy. And the six nation came up just recent times in 1722 to make it six nations. The Tuscarora people um, in their homelands of uh, North and South Carolina area were very, very impacted harshly the settlement and uh, uh, people coming in for land and so on. And they were nearly um, wiped out. They were distributed so far that they did come up and ask for uh, protection under the tree of peace uh, of the pine with the Confederacy. And so after much discussion and um, talk about that, um, the Oneida Nation, my own nation, uh, adopted the whole nation of the Tuscarora and they have uh, some part of homelands up here near Niagara region. And so Tonawanda and, and uh, uh, other places like that. So now that went from the five nations to the six nations. And so that's a little short, quick history about that. In which case, uh, we want to talk about the people themselves a little bit more. We're what's called a matriarchal society. So we have clan mothers who are the leaders. We have in our particular uh, and to be found in all of the Six Nations, we have three common clans. There are nine all together in all of the uh, nations, but the three that are found in every uh, nation are the turtle, the bear, and the wolf. 
So each of those plants is uh, led by a clan mother. Now, the clan mothers, uh, actually three for each clan. And so for the turtle clan, there are three clan mothers. And my particular clan mother, uh, whose uh, title is Sononcis, and so she takes care of the agenda of the house. In other words, decides what is of importance or maybe not so much importance to bring to the whole nation when we have uh, general councils and so on. And so each of the clans have three. So now that means we have three for the turtle, three for bear, three for the wolf. So that's nine clan mothers in our, just in our nation, in each of the nations, they each have that. So then each of those clan mothers will choose sub chiefs and faith keepers to help with the work of the community. And so the matriarchal part that the clan mothers are the ones who make the decisions. Um, they would actually withhold, you know, uh, food supplies in the olden days. If uh, the men uh, warriors became, you know, agitated and wanted to go to war against another uh, community or nation. And if they did not, if the, if the women did not agree uh, to do that, then they would withhold and uh, you know, discipline their um, lawyers. They know we're not to do that. Those people you know, need our help instead of being angry, etc. And so the matriarchal society is the way we still conduct ceremonies today. And uh, we'll um, talk a little bit about that if someone has some questions. Um, I did talk about the wampums a bit. I'm not sure if uh, somebody wants to tell me um, what kind of shell they are made from, made of with the wampum seeds. Okay, students. So put that into the chat or into the form. I know we have some shout outs while we're doing it. Miss Kim, class, we do hear you coming through. Uh, Sarah, we weren't able to shout you out. Uh, and we have Andre and Mr. from Mr. Jawad's class. But um, Patsy, we did have a question about those while we're waiting for that. How many shells would be used in a wampum belt while we wait well, for some of the answers to come in? Yes, yes. <laughs> I did have it at my hand, my fingertips, but the two row has 11,000 shells, see, like beads. I'm not sure how many uh, this would take because you've got different sizes of them coming from the waters and so, but. Uh, the number of beads would, uh, the beads of course would all be approximately the same size, uh, which is really not very big, but they're, they are you know, pretty uniform in size. Uh, and so uh, the two row has uh, 11,000 um, beads in it. And so that's all wampum shells, purple and white. Hmm. Awesome. Um, Jill, do, do we have any answers to this question? Mm -hmm. I know Ms. Dario's class has one part of the shell. There was two, I believe there's two shells for this wampum belt. Yes, I didn't repeat those names very, very often, very many times. So uh, we're it's okay, so some of the class has it. Some of them have it. Um, yeah. uh, uh, Delansa from uh, Miss Wheeler's class um, has, ha they, they all have one of them or they, like yeah. one or the other one of them. So yeah. Srinenka, Miss Shannon's class. Um, okay. Oh, Miss Shannon's class has both of them. Okay, so yes, yeah. what were the two shells? So the two shells are called Quahog and Whelk. So that's uh, a little hard to wrap around, but the Quahog and the Whelk are the uh, the shells. I'm trying to find the right camera. There we go. So they have purple and white inside them. So you can imagine a lot of work to... Um, be able to take these shells and, you know, crack them in such a way and make sure that they had um, the colors extracted from them to, uh, to make those beads. And so some, of course, have more purple than white on the other, but that's the kind they are. And they're very, very ordinary looking when you see them on the outside like that. And it isn't until you open them and see inside you realize how beautiful they really are. So these actually came from, from the Eastern Lord. My neighbors, my good neighbors uh, go out to the Cape Hatteras uh, and 
kind of had to bring those home. Mm -hmm. Very good. Done very well answering those. Okay. Um, I'm just uh, going to talk a little bit more about um, what we would be doing at this uh, time of the year. Of course, we've just come through what we call Lavientos, which is planned. Um, our people follow the 28-day moon cycle. Now that's uh, behind me, uh, shown on the uh, poster there uh, around this uh, outside of the turtle. And uh, so that is how we you know, look at our times and, and days and so on. Then, of course, uh, if you look at the turtle shell itself, you find that there are 13, what we call 13 grandmother moons. And how does that determine? The 28 days go along, and then uh, fifth day in the new moon, not the full moon, but the new moon, we go into the longhouse and give thanks for what we have been given, and creation um, hopefully will give us uh, what we need for the next moon phase time. And so this happens 13 times in a year. If you were to look at a, sh a, a, a turtle shell, just any sh turtle that's in the creeks, uh, etc., you can count uh, 28 scoots, they call them, around the outside of that turtle. And that reflects the 28-day moon cycle that we follow. And that happens 13 times a year. So 28 times 13, for you mathematicians, is 364. And, of course, we're used to saying there are 365 days in a year. However, um, the Gregorian calendar has to add a day, and some day, some moons are 31 days, some 30, and then uh, February 28th and every four years adding. We don't have to do that in the Haudenosaunee way. It uh, happens when we just follow the, uh, the moon cycle. So there's 13 ceremonies in our uh, yearly calendar. And so we've just finished uh, planting time toast in, um, in May, around that time. And now it's awahite, which is the strawberry. And so you know that at this time of the year in this part of the world, we are now getting our fresh strawberries from, from the uh, you know, farms and so on. But the strawberries that we really treasure are the ones that have grown out in the meadows. Um, in the old days, uh, we would know that the ceremony time was come because the children would run in with handfuls of these beautiful, sweet little strawberries, awahit. And so, so that's a, a, a woman's ceremony. It comes from this story of the uh, creation story. A woman fell through the um, hole in the uh, garden in the sky world. She was grasping at plants and held uh, in her hand strawberries and tobacco as she was falling down to the water. And up came the turtle. And she uh, had to have some soil to plant. And so the very uh, waterfowl tried to find that for her. Many of them could not, and uh, they expired. Whereas the little muskrat, they say, has such lung capacity, he was able to dive down to the very depths. He was gone so long, they thought he wasn't going to make it either. But then he finally came, as they say, belly up, and he was out of breath, but he had the soil in his little paws, and they put that on the, on the um, turtle and she was able to um, dance and sing and they came into being. She could plant her in medicine, sustenance, and the uh, tobacco and the food. And so uh, that is how well we came to be uh, with uh, this time of the year, the strawberries. And then um, the next uh, plant, so the next part of the uh, 13 the moons, we call them, uh, or ceremonies, will be the um, green bean. Uh, we call uh, one of the three sisters, the corn, the beans, and the squash, and that's uh, Osaheid. And so we have our little green beans coming, our string beans and so on, and then we'll have our corn on that, and we'll have ceremonies for each of those. And then it continues on to the fall, and we'll be gathering a yantokwas, and then we'll have our harvest, and then our Thanksgiving sometime around, you know, end of October, November, and uh, continue to December area of called Long Nights. They talk about our, our uh, stories and legends and so on. And so we're oral based people. But uh, in recent times, we have been uh, using a standardized way of, uh, of spelling and uh, learning our language. So uh, can we ask uh, one of the um, last questions? 
what does matrilineal, matrilineal mean? Sorry, Jonathan, I don't hear, I don't hear you speaking right now. I, I am on mute. I do this at least once every day. <laughs> What does what does matrilineal mean? Um, and this is our last question. Um, and I know this was asked all the time. And I know you know being muted. I know many of our students can relate to that one. <laughs> Miss R's class has responded and says that females are at the center of the community. Um, okay. Yeah, here we and come, Miss Kim. Lineage through the mat, the maternal side. Arushi says ceremonies and communities led by women. Awesome! I also give a shout out to Candice and uh, Miss Ray's class um, and Lily. I know you've been in here answering, um, but yes, no, Patsy. Many of them have been telling us about. Uh, leaders being led by females um, and based on kinship with the mother of the female side. Are they correct? Yes, yes it is. Our, our clans uh, are given uh, through our, our mother. So obviously my mother was Turtle Clan and her mother, my grandmother, uh, Turtle Clan. My children are Turtle Clan. And so that relates to the fact that, um, you know, we're uh, the leadership is the mothers and of course we we know who who was our first teacher and who first uh, you know brought us up and led led us to, to be here and that's our mothers and so that's also um the responsibility of the gardens is also the female side um and uh so the leadership so again uh, your mother uh, does not approve of something you uh, have done you know she might make you go with us or something like that you know? But yeah, so we do honor our women, and uh, so we want to um, make sure that uh, that continues in our societies and our culture. So I uh, appreciate that. Thank you very much. You've done a very good job of, of listening and answering correctly. And so I just want to give thanks to Mr. Soul and the other leaders to uh, have, let me come uh, and tell you a little bit about the um, Haudenosaunee Longha people and how uh, some of these symbols and, and ways of life are still with us. We are, uh, as I said, one of the oldest, if not the oldest living democracy in the world. And we try to follow the great line of law that we have a good mind. We say, that means that we've brought our minds together. And so it'll be this way. So let me say again, uh, and uh, I think that we uh, Leave it with you to continue on your classes and say Nagitwa. We don't have a word for goodbye because if we don't see you in this world, we'll see you in the spirit world. So please uh, enjoy the rest of the day and Yawonko Nagitwa. Yawonko, thank you uh, for everything, Patsy, uh, yep. for this. And so uh, hopefully we'll use this information, students, as we get into our Minecraft and build Yayonko once once more, um, and we will uh, see you soon. Okay. Okay, students, we are going to move into our let's in, let's build and getting into Minecraft. Uh, before that, just a reminder um, that this is a YouTube pause and play. So by all means, teachers, if you need to pause and help your students within the worlds, please do so. Uh, but before we get there, I, I know, uh, Jill, you are from the area in which Manitowabi Aki <laughs> is, uh, the, the world was built on. And I know our next, uh, the, the slide in here is going to talk a little bit more about the past and the present. So kind of like, can you explain where the rivers are or where this world actually is situated? So like, are you want to focus on the forks? Yeah, like what, what two, I know we have two rivers and uh, just exactly where uh, when we get into this world, just to make it live for all these students to know that it's not just this Minecraft place, it's a real place. <laughs> okay, so yeah, it's actually a real place and it's in Winnipeg. So it's maybe from where I live, maybe a 10 minute, uh, maybe not even 10 minute car ride, 
Um, but the Forks is a place of celebration now, and it is where the two rivers meet. Um, and they say that it's very significant because when we had the fur trade and things like that, where that was where they had met. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. And yes, a shout out to Caitlin, a shout out to uh, Andre from Miss Jawed's class again. Um, there are a lot of treaties, and so you can probably think of that. But we're going to go on. As you explore into Manitowabi Aki, we're going to come up to these amazing petroforms. And I do believe, Jill, that they tell stories of creation, as well as various other stories uh, that are, are important to the Anishinaabe. Am I correct? You are correct. So the petroforms actually um, were, I want to say it was a place where they shared their traditional knowledge and lots of elders will say it was like their teaching place, kind of like a university, and that each one of those petroforms, it does have a story that goes with it in traditional teachings. Um, for example, like the turtle, right? And, and our elder just kind of talked about it. That was our calendar. Um, so you had to know, I guess you had to learn about that stuff there. You could learn about it there. Um, some of the other ones was the spider woman. There is one there that the students will see. Um, so that one was more about like the interwebbing of all life forms and how we need to again, respect all of creation. Um, the other one was the Thunderbird. And Winnipeg was fortunate yesterday. We did have the Thunderbirds come out and we had a little bit of a rain, um, which is nice because it just replenishes our waterways, right? And we kind of talked about the significance of water yesterday. So that was kind of nice. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, we'll get into those. We'll get into those boy, uh, our students um, and folks, we'll get into those right away. So without further ado, let's get into, um, as we go into the world, you're going to meet these guides and these guides are going to be essential. So this world is not like your traditional world as you go in and build. You're going to meet some elders and some guides. So these are Bobby Joe and um, Corey, and they are going to help you throughout the world. So if you get lost, please talk to them. So like Casey and Ben, by all means, get into those worlds and talk to them. You're also going to meet three other elders. And uh, they're the ones that are the knowledge keepers. I just wanted to show you their pictures as we get into the world. So let me show you how to get into there. We're gonna log into your Minecraft world. And when you log in, again, for those of you who already know where everything is, by all means, dive right into the world of Manitowabi Aki. But for those of us who are brand new to it, I want to show you in Minecraft, you can go to the view library. So once you're in view library, you're gonna go into lessons. In lessons, you're gonna type, uh, get into equity and the world Manitowabi Aki is right there. So once again, when you log in, it is in your view library. You're gonna go into lessons, equity and Manitowabi Aki and you're gonna hit create world. And by all means, please pause this video, replay it and come back when you are ready to log in. We will still be here ready for you to explore um, I'm going to give you three tasks, though, uh, as we're loading this. So we're not going to be able to finish the whole world, but we're going to talk to some elders. We're going to visit the petroforms and we're going to help a village. So those are the three things that you're in here. And Milad, the, uh, the world is already in adventurous mode. So you're not going to switch to creative or survival. You're just going to play the world as it is. And you're going to talk to these elders and then they're going to tell you your next instructions. And you're going to have to be able to get to the petroforms. That's really where we're going to go. But when we when I get into the world, because I'm still loading, you can talk, you can listen to all the cool things that the, gener that the Minecraft is generating for you. And then you're able to see what I'm talking about. You'll probably find teepees, which are a little bit different than what Patsy was talking about with the longhouses. So we know that that our indigenous, um, our, our, our First Nations, our many nations, we know that our uh, Métis are, are a different uh, uh, community, and we know that our Inui are also in different communities. And so now that we're into Minecraft, I'll show you a little bit, and then I'm going to be quiet. And so, Jill, I think this is the, the rivers that we were talking about. I don't know which one is which. 
So it is the Assiniboine and the Red River. Awesome. Um, and then and then we have our teepees. And then as I was talking, students, we have Corey. He will tell you once I once I talk to him, he will tell you things. And if there's so much reading, um, students, you can easily click on the um, the immersive reader and it will read it for you. So for those of us who are in our younger uh, grades or even in some of our older grades, if you need to, it will allow you to read. And so that's the nice thing about the immersive reader. So if you need to, you will also find the land acknowledgements off to the side and then you have your elders. So right now I'm gonna be quiet for a bit. Jill, if you do see anything that you uh, think is important to talk about as I, as I walk around, feel free to. When I'm ready to, to move on to the petroforms, I will have you come back. So if you're in this world, um, if you're in this world here, we're in the Manitowabi Aki. So uh, if you want to uh, go back in, you just go into the world and go find it in the library section, but you can always pause this video and go on. Um, I also um, want to mention here, we, are, we learned about this on the first day of our indigenous knowledge about tobacco and giving tobacco. And I know some of you are trying to figure out which way is south. <clears throat> um, I will show you that once we finally f um, get there, there is a little path down here that we will be coming down. And I'm going to actually ask Jill as we go down this thing to, to see if there's any plants and animals that we have here. But try your best to explore. Um, if you do get lost, something that I do uh, encourage you to try to remember is that you can turn on show coordinates. That's in your settings. <clears throat> and I just I just show coordinates. And that will tell me where I am at all times in the top right hand uh, left hand corner. And I can always find where I am even I get lost. But if you stick to the paths, you generally don't get lost. But you can also look up at the stars. I believe um, Isaac tells you what those stars mean and how they can guide you. <clears throat> So the Big Dipper travels south and speak with Diane. So I'm gonna travel south. And Jill, are there things that you notice in this world? I was just trying to look at the animals in the back there and the trees. I think that's a deer. Yeah. So that's on a normal Minecraft. Also the uh, the cedar, which we'll come back to. Or the birch bark, sorry, the birch, birch bark. Yeah, I was gonna say birch bark. And, hmm. and I believe 
There are some berries. <laughs> So is it just birch bark trees in this whole world? Uh, there are oh, other ones. Some other ones, yeah, okay, I see that. Yeah, so um, there are other trees that you go along in here too that are, are helpful to play with. Um, so just doing a check-in, um, let's see how, uh, where everyone is. We're heading down the path. Um, once you talk to Isaac, he tells you to head south and speak with Diane. And we're gonna head towards the petroforms. Uh, and so that's one of the ways that we're trying to do. So if you wanna head down this path, we're just checking in to make sure that you're with me here. Um, uh, and the path that I, I was following is the same path that was next to those teepees. It is a fairly long path. If you stick near it, you'll be able to find uh, Diana. Diana is not this person here. This, this person says crafter. Uh, it is another indigenous person that is along here. Um, but you'll notice some things that are not in traditional Minecraft. Uh, this world was created with indigenous elders, the Anishinaabe along within Manitoba. Um, so you see in here things that do not normally happen inside of Minecraft, like the TP, uh, which is a triangular shape. This is something that you wouldn't find uh, in, in a traditional Minecraft world. Uh, Saskatoon berries. <laughs> which are in here, um, along with, you You may find some moose, you may find a bear. Um, and what I like doing is I like using something, and this is more for the teacher side of things, but students, you can also take pictures inside of Minecraft. And I was reminded yesterday on Twitter that I can also put these into my portfolio and I can record down my thinking. So all I did is I took a picture I found the, the little book that's inside of my, um, on my taskbar, which is already there for you. This is number four. When I click open, I can then find, I can then find the pictures and I can type what this is. So this is something that I can explain my thinking or record my journey as I go through the world of Manitowabiaki. And so this is a kind of a fun way of, of, of making sure that you understand what's happening. Um, and here is Diane. She is always in a blue dress. Um, so you can, you can find them when, when we, I'm going to talk to her and she's going to tell me what to do next. So hopefully you found this spot. I will be uh, quiet for a minute as I read, and then we're going to get into the petroforms. Uh, to speak to the guides, all you have to do is, is click on them. Uh, so you right click and, uh, the guides will open up their speech. So remember, one of the tasks that I gave you, um, students, is to talk to the elders. Hopefully, most of you have talked to the elders. The next, the elder told you to follow the path south to find Diane. Diane is in a blue dress. Diane just told me that I need to head to the petroforms. So, um, so I'm going to uh, head to the fan, uh, head to the uh, the petroforms, which are down this path. And uh, I, I do know though, Jill, the petroforms are a little bit farther from the rivers normally in real life. Um, but in, in Manitowabiaki, they're pretty close. <laughs> okay. Um, we do have some students waiting at the petroforms already. Oh, they beat me to it. Now, I don't know students, if you found this or not, inside of Manitowabiaki in the world, you may notice these red dresses. This is something that if you're with your teacher might be something to later further explore 
the ideas of the red dresses and what they represent and how they represent the missing and indigenous women um, uh, oh, throughout Canada uh, and murdered women of Canada. So that might be something that you want to explore. Uh, and, but I'll leave that up to you and your teacher. I hit the wrong button. And so now that I am in the Petroforms, I need to find Diane one more time. There are five Petroforms that you are to find. And Diane will tell you this. This is Manitowabe Aki. It is our university, the place in where life instructions were given uh, to the Anishinaabek of how we are to live. Examine the five petroforms. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you some time to find the petroforms. The one thing that I'm going to tell you, though, you must hit this button when you find the petroforms. If you don't hit the button, it won't register that you found them. So I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to let you search. There's five of them.
Okay, so hopefully you have found, I had a little glitch, I do apologize. Um, you have found all your petroforms. If you do get lost, um, if you do get lost, uh, there are five of them when you are in here. And uh, the farthest one is Sky Woman, which is my favorite, right over here. This is my favorite one. Um, and then the snake, which is all the way on the other side um, of, of the, uh, the arena. And so when you hit that button, you should have clicked on it and you will fly up and it will tell you that you found the fifth or the, or the ones that you have here. You can take pictures of it. And then it tells you to go back to, to Grandma Chickadee. Grandma Chickadee is our elder. And she is the one that is going to pass on the next information for you to do to help and craft um, craft uh, some crafting tools in order to build a birch bark canoe. Now, before we leave, Jill, um, is there anything that we should know about these petroforms before we uh, head off? Um, so yep. Sorry. So what do you oh, want no, to go ahead? Okay. So I'm trying to, so in there, there's the sky women, which we talked about, and she helped create and bring life here. Um, so just before I get a little bit more, there was a question in our chat there or whatever about um, somebody was asking about where this is. This is actually located in Canada. And the thing with the petroforms is they say it is at the center of Turtle Island. So it is in Canada, if that answers your question. The other ones in there, turtles, we talked about. Um, so it is our calendar. There are the 13 on there for one. Each one represents the 13 moons that we see every season. And sometimes there are significant ones like June is the strawberry moon, um, signifying like summer in that. Spider Woman teaches us the web of interconnectedness, right? How we are dependent on the earth for food, for water and all of that kind of stuff. So it's just a reminder. The Thunderbird again is significant because without the thunderbird we wouldn't have the water and the fire right which are needed we need our waterways replenished and the same thing sometimes when we have those thunderstorms it does start a natural fire and what it ends up doing is it replenishes our forests for new growth amazing so hopefully now that you found all five of the petroforms you can start heading back to the village and we need to start crafting uh, and understanding wh um, what materials to gather as we craft. And uh, you've gotten the book from Grandma Chickadee. Uh, that book it will be found inside of your uh, inventory and it'll tell you um, what to do and where to go next. And I have, I have, the, I have too many, so many things inside of my inventory because I've played this game many times. Um, but you'll notice that when I'm inside of the inside of my book, it tells me in order to get the birch bark canoe, I need to collect six sticks and twenty five wigwads or birch bark. Now, if I'm if I remember correctly from listening to uh, Kim and the elders from Coco and Don, they talked about not harvesting everything that we need to take. We only we only harvest what we need from from the community uh, and from from Mother Earth. Uh, is that something that you remember, uh, Jill? Yeah, and that's a really significant point is you only take what you need. So you don't need to take 100 sticks with you if that's because then you're just taking and it's a little bit wasteful. And it's um, amazing how kids learn that through this game. My daughter was playing the game, was playing Minecraft yesterday, and that's what she said. She's like, Mom, I'm only taking what I need. She's not says I'm not going to take too much. So it's it's just about thinking about our future generations, right? And how we need to make sure we keep all of these natural resources and stuff for future generations, so they can have the same experiences that we do. So to harvest, as soon as you harvest the, which is something that you can't do in normal Minecraft as well. 
I didn't know if you knew that, Jill. Um, you'll find the sticks just lying around. Uh, and then you may have to, if you do what I do, I, I don't always hold the button down when I harvest my, <laughs> when I harvest and I just tap and I'm like, oh yeah, I'd hold the button down. And then I, if you remember correctly, how many, if you get lost, just open that book again, 25 and six sticks to harvest, to hold, to just right click or to uh, pick up sticks. It's your left click, just like when you're using something. There is my favorite animal, the moose. Oh, there's some sticks. And then I am going to go back to the village to find my crafting table and I will help you make a canoe. So I'm just gonna be quiet for a minute while I go find that crafting table. It is right back at the beginning. So if you're still at the Petroforms, you need to come back to the beginning. We're gonna have a boat. We actually may get to the bison part of the of the, the hunt, which is I know some of us are are trying to get to. You will find, there we go, I'll be quiet. So I'm gonna open up and you can always pa a pause at a time anywhere you go along here. I'm gonna open up and if you notice the crafting table is in a, a three by three array. Um, and so that is important when crafting. So I know I need to have two sticks in this corner, two sticks in this corner, and then the birch bark or the wigwaz around the outside with the two sticks in the middle. So let's see what I have when I right click on I can then take my birch bark and my sticks. Now this one says I have 26 sticks, so I can hold it down and I can count the sticks that I have. If I hold down, there's a two. And you can see that I'm carrying a little, probably too many things. So it looks like I need to have uh, five, 10, 15, 20 more. Um, Birch bark, lovely thing is that the birch bark is all around us. So hopefully you're making that canoe. I'm just gonna be quiet here. It's gonna take me a little minute. So I will be back in a couple seconds. I'm trying to uh, get my last <laughs> one. There we go. And then so once you've crafted, you'll notice that it, everything turned into that birch bark canoe. And I know it's tiny on the screen there. I do apologize there, but we're going to grab that. Now, the one thing um, that's really cool, uh, students, if you wanted to, you can, um, there's some YouTube videos that can your teachers can find on how to create birch bark canoes. And the one thing I learned from the elder on the video is that these are created normally by hand using a bone knife and a bone tool and how much mathematics is built into that building of that, of that canoe um, and uh, how, how it takes years to learn how to build, not just the 10 seconds that you have here. So once you have the canoe, you are to head to the next village. The next village is up the river. And so we're gonna use the canoe by dropping it into the water and then we're gonna get into the canoe and we're gonna paddle 
towards the sun. Don't go up this river. That leads you to somewhere else and you could get lost. <laughs> to paddle, you just, the same way that you would walk forward, just like walking, it, it just, to go side to side, it's the same way that you would walk. So I'm just gonna walk forward. And when you're on here, on the river, it's, it's actually kind of interesting to watch. You might find an animal that you, again, wouldn't normally see. And sometimes it's around here. Jill, I don't know if you can, oh. Do you see which animal that is? I see it. It's got a long tail. A beaver? Yeah. <laughs> so do they have all the animals in there? Like, do they have the beaver? I know we see the, like in the petriforms, we have the turtle, but just, I'm just thinking of like with the seven teachings, do they have, do they represent those animals in here? Yeah, uh, okay. the Sasquatch is in there as well. Um, he was actually by the petriform or it was by the petriforms. Um, the bear, the bison, the moose are here. So once you're here at there, we're gonna once again talk to Corey to get out of the boat. You just uh, hit this or hit your right click, I believe. Yep. Just right click and you get out. I'm gonna talk to Corey for a minute. He's gonna tell us our next instructions, uh, which will lead you towards knowing which clan you are in and then heading to the bison. And this is probably where we're gonna have to leave off. We're gonna come back in about five minutes. So hopefully you are here, you followed that river down the sun um, and you found some seven, like Jill said, the seven teachings, you found some animals. The turtle is actually in the river. Uh, there is a turtle in the river. Um, maybe you found one of the animals, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna be quiet again for about five minutes and then we're gonna bring you back to kind of wrap up our discussions Again, this world of Manitowabi Aiki is meant to take all the learning you have done from these last three days and learn the differences between the different communities that we have and what we have presented in the knowledge. And hopefully you're recording that in your portfolios and you're taking pictures. So I'm just gonna be quiet. I'm gonna talk to Corey and see where we go.
Okay, so welcome back to this last one. I know we have some questions around uh, some of the other challenges, but before I get to the, uh, those, I want to kind of talk about the bison hunt. The, if you talk to Vern, he says that building, working together as a community is helpful. Um, the sticks and stones you'll find laded throughout Manitowabi Aki, they're in the forest, so you kind of have to go around. I need to make 35 barriers each barrier is three sticks and four stones. I will let you do the math on that as a great math lesson for some of our older students. Um, to use the sticks and the stones to collect all that and to build, it does take time and it is best to work in a community. So inviting people in uh, to your world as long as you're in the same domain helps. Um, now, Jill, is there any questions before we bring everyone back from the Minecraft world about the, the world in Minecraft before we can move on or? Um, just a few questions. I think kids might have signed in a little bit late. Some are asking what petroforms are. Um, so petroforms are rock formations and they were, they were created years and years ago um, by indigenous people in the area and they all tell a story. So one of the ones we didn't really talk about though was the serpent um, in those petroforms. And that one I think is pretty cool because the story goes that um, they were the powerful ones that they made all these tunnels and stuff and they connected and made all these rivers and lakes that we, we see or have in our areas. Um, they do say that the serpent is still there. You know how people talk about the Loch Ness monster and see all these water creatures. Well, they do say that that is the serpent that they are seeing, that it um, lives in the deepest parts of our waters. So it's not really gone, I guess, like people think. Um, there was another one. Um, it says, what's uh, Wigwask? Because we have a student who is named that, and I just wanted to highlight that I do believe that that is birch bark. Am I right? Okay. Yeah, I'm just reading off of the uh, the chart. I may be pronouncing it incorrectly, and I know that some uh, some of our students had trouble to um, to harvest. I had to, uh, if you were in session one, you may have turned your world into creative, and so I had to turn it back to adventure. And you just hold down the button, and it'll, it will just take off the bark that you need. If you um, do some of the stuff on the top, uh, it it will take it away. Um, I could try finding a birch bark right now. <laughs> oh, there we go. There's one right up here. Uh, the flat that I'm in does not have, uh, may not be able to get up. Uh, there we go. So uh, when I'm in here, uh, and I know some of us are on the iPads, you have to kind of hold down the button. So if you hold down, yeah, this one won't let me. Um, so in some parts of the world, it won't let you uh, access the birch bark until you're in that world to cultivate it. But if you hold down that section, it will allow you to uh, to just cultivate that versus being in uh, creative. Uh, and then the petroforms, there are five. Uh, the snake, which is one of my favorite, is all, all the way to the east. And um, Sky Woman is to the west. And then um, to the north is the Thunderbird and the turtle is to the south. And those are your parameters and they're everything inside of that. So if you haven't found them, that's where you need to go. So I need you to come on back, please. Um, we're going to wrap up our discussions. Uh, before that, though, I want to give some good shout outs to some of the classes who have been participating. Adriana, thank you for being here. Jamal, Victoria, um, and Chana. Uh, you've done amazing, um, and yeah, Wigwas uh, and Sarah, um, great job. And so I'm going to ask you a question inside here to bring you all back now that we have your attention. What was one of the coolest animals that you saw inside of the world, Manitowabi Aki? What was one of the coolest animals? I don't know, Jill, you mentioned that these are the seven sacred animals that are in here. Um, did you see all seven or was there one that was missing? I didn't. The one I was wondering about was the eagle. Ah, the I eagle is know. there. Yeah, I don't know if I've seen it today, but that one I think is probably my favorite just because it represents 
what it represents. I do have one question though, Jonathan, before I go forward is, can you just explain how to change modes in Minecraft? Yeah, yeah, I can show that really quickly. Um, so when you're inside of your, your settings, uh, all you have to do is change this back to adventure instead of creative or survival. It's the very first page and then I changed this one as well back to adventure. So I just hit escape and away we go. But we do have some uh, students. I know Miss Michelle from um, the Wandering Spirit School uh, is here. Uh, this class, Lucas said the bear, Kazmen said the mo the beaver, moose, and duck, all three. And then Zachariah is like bear for sure. The bear, da 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 right on, right? Um, Yasmit said the bison, Emma, the wolf. This is all amazing. Um, that I, I mean, I personally love the Sasquatch. I don't know if you, it's in the Petroforms. The Sasquatch is there. I know that's one of our other colleagues, Amar's favorite uh, one as well. Um, so, okay. So we have the beaver, Lucas from Miss Flores class at all the moose all the way. Okay, so one more question. Can you name one of the Petroforms that you found? Miss Carbon, uh, Madame Carbonell's class, you said the Sasquatch. <laughs> Hi to Miss Madame Carbonell. <laughs> Is there one of the petroforms that you loved? Jill, you mentioned the snake. I absolutely, that's one of my favorite um, because of the story of how it creates pathways around the world and uh, the river systems and, and the, um, as a trail runner, I, the, the appreciation I have for the land and the paths in which are created both naturally and unnaturally are, are ways in which I explore this world and, 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 and clear from it. So I do love those. Are there any shout outs in there? I know I have Emily says the spider woman. Um, Madison likes sky woman. Oh, Sophia likes the thunderbird. Some serpents. Go be Tristan on, the, on, on a Thunderbird. Way to go, Tristan. Uh, that was a beautiful story too, Jill, that you told me about the Thunderbird. Um, I didn't realize that that story connection to it. And I love uh, the, the stories that you brought, the teachings that you've brought with that. So make which to that. Okay, uh, students, we are just wrapping up our thought. I believe there is one more question. Yes, there is. What was something you saw that was different from the Haudenosaunee people. So you remember Patsy came in, um, Patsy is from the, the area in which I live, uh, quite near me uh, in Southern Ontario, compared to where Kim uh, being up in Fort uh, Wayne, up in the, in the Northern parts of Ontario, and Jill is in uh, Manitoba. So we had three different regions represented to show you the difference of, our, uh, uh, of the First Nations uh, and Métis and Inuit people. And so uh, was there something different that you saw that you heard from Patsy? Um, I don't know, um, Jill, was there something that you uh, heard uh, that you learned a little bit different than what you saw in Manitowabi Aki? Um, I'm just thinking, I guess one of them was the structures, right? Is, and I don't, don't think she really talked about it, but like the teepee um, to lots of people, the teepee is just a, stru a structure, but really when you're putting that teepee together, each pole has a different teaching, like there's mm -hmm. obedience and things like that. So it's not like we just put these structures together with without being mindful. So with the teepee, there comes lots of teachings and reminders and how we should live our lives, right? To be the best we can be. And it kind of ties back to the seven teachings that I have behind me here. Um, Right, um, and I guess for my, where I was taught, and I talked yesterday about my role model, Mr. Kershane. Um, so one of the big things I guess that I've learned is nobody is perfect, right? And I'm not perfect, but each day I just take the time to reflect and think about the seven teachings. And if I did my best that day, I guess to follow them. And then I'm more mindful the next day to make sure that that I do better or be better the next day. So make which at, I, I, I like this, uh, that, that idea, like, and I, Patsy said the same thing to learn all our elders said the same thing about learning and, and being better um, and thinking. 
And thank you, shout outs to Miss Simon's class, Emma. Uh, thank you for having so much fun with us. Um, uh, this is amazing. Um, let, let us do one more question. Last question before we wrap up. Throughout the three days, write one teaching you learn from the elders and knowledge keepers, even if it's from Manitowabi Aki, uh, maybe it's from uh, Mr. Gushane, maybe it's from Coco and, and Don, or maybe it's from Patsy. Um, what is one thing that you learned from them that you are gonna take home? Arshiana, thank you. This is my Minecraft bow tie. <laughs> I know one thing that I learned a lot was about the things in which I, the, my relations, and it's something that I know I was reminded of by one of my students uh, um, about the relationships that I have with everyone, with Jill, my relationship now with you, uh, I'm thankful for it and how I can, I as a settler can continue that relationship and reconciliation. And I think students, you can do the same thing. Gwen, tobacco, yes. A lot about tobacco and giving thanks, the medicines, the red dresses, Oliver. Raxal, thank you. Clara, I learned about how important it is to pay respect to the land in ways in which giving tobacco only uh, and only taking what you need. This is all amazing. And so um, a big miigwetch to all of you. Uh, shout, um, to, uh, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, Jill, thank you for, for the knowledge that you gave us yesterday and for today. Uh, it has been great work working with everyone. Uh, so students, connect back with your teachers as we, as we end our sessions. Hopefully you can remember this is on YouTube Live so you can come back and forward and that you can continue playing and exploring and learning from these amazing elders uh, and knowledge keepers. And hopefully we have uh, shown you a little bit, just a little bit of the amazing and embracing some of the knowledge that uh, is from our elders that we have here today. Uh, Jill, any parting words before we uh, finish? No, just like to wish you all a great day and thank you for taking the time to learn about some of this knowledge. Um, it's very important, I guess. Um, and it brings me great joy that kids across Canada are learning about this uh, traditional knowledge that we have and that you are embracing. And just reading through some of the comments there is very heartwarming to know that you are our future leaders, and I think Canada will be in a better position years down the road. 